So, Salam alaikum. Um, I have a new guest today. Her name is Yasmin Khan. And I told her before the episode she's special because the first episode I did was with you. And I wanted to interview you because um, I didn't interview you um, on the first episode. Uh, before we start, maybe you could introduce yourself very short, just one, two sentences, because people already know you. It sounds good. Thank you so much for having me on here again. Um, I'm so excited at how, how much this podcast has grown since we started, alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, quick introduction. Um, my name is Yasmin, and I'm a financial educator. We can jump into the first question. Um, how's the relationship with your parents? I have no relationship with either one of my parents. Why is that? You know, it goes back to that childhood. Both of my parents um, had very, very difficult childhoods. And unfortunately, neither one of them was able to, I think, overcome their demons. And so a part of that cycle was having to kind of, I mean, so to be honest, actually they have more so limited contact with me, but I think that when you have a lot of demons that you're dealing with and somebody who really struggles to overcome them, being around somebody who is able to get through them and, um, you know, sort of achieve things that they don't believe are maybe possible for them. So the more that I became, the happier that I became, the more free that I became, the more I built the life that I always wanted, um, the more that became a trigger for, for my family. And so, um, so yeah, it was one at a time. Everybody sort of had their limit. Um, you know, when I put myself through school, that was too much for one person and, and that they ended up leaving. And then when I you know, bought my first house, that was a trigger for, for someone else. And then when I got married and ultimately as, as more good things came into my life, one by one, everyone in my family left. Um, okay. I didn't know this, although I know you since, since a year, but I didn't, I never got that impression from you. Um, Next question, which is actually a very easy question for you. Um, how's your relationship with money? So, alhamdulillah, I think that, you know, I think you've probably gathered that my childhood was not was not great. Um, and so at a very young age, I was financially independent. Um, I started working when I was 14. Um, you know, by the time that I was, you know, 17, 18, I was on my own. Um, I think you know this, you know, that I lived in Kenya for a while and India for a mm, while. True. And so, um, you know, at a very young age, I didn't have anybody to support me financially. And so um, I learned that money could be a source of security for me. And by making money, I could create a safe home for myself. I could buy my own groceries and make my own food. And all of the insecurity from growing up, I was able to overcome that by being smart with money and having more money. And at 18, you know, um, that I was really on my own. And that helped me to really be smart with money because I realized that money could protect me. And so I started investing. Um, I got a job. I put myself through school. While I was in school full time, I was also working full time. I invested. I lived in a tiny uh, studio apartment right in between my office and my school. And for many years, I would sleep three or four hours a night and just go to work and go to school and go to work and go to school. Um, and I, I did invest. And I did end up making a very decent amount of money. Alhamdulillah, my investments did well. And by the time that I was 24, as you know, um, I was able to buy my first property. And that was really sort of when I felt like, okay, I'm going to, and, and then I kept investing, you know, I, even though I bought my first property, I didn't live in that property. 
um, I put it up for rent and I was still living in a tiny apartment um, and working and investing. And then at 26, that's when I bought this house, um, which is a house that, that I love. And, um, and now, alhamdulillah, I can say that I feel very, very confident and I've really built a very strong financial foundation for myself and for my family. And inshallah, my kids will never have to go through what I did. Inshallah. Uh, what are you afraid of, Ms. Yasmin? I am most afraid of wasting my time on this earth. I am most afraid of standing before Allah one day and him saying, I gave you all of this. And what did you do? And so I do my absolute best. I know that it is a massive privilege that I have been given to come from where I come from and to be where I am today at the age that I am. And I pray that through my work, inshallah, you know, I'll be able to answer to Allah one day and say, you know, this is what I did with what you gave me. Um, if you were not afraid of anything, what would you do? Honestly, probably we go out and travel and do absolutely nothing and be completely selfish and spend all my money and buy six Lamborghinis and drive around. <laughs> you know, if I wasn't scared of having to answer to Allah one day, I would just waste my time, right? That's, I would just waste my time. Waste my time and waste all of my money. <laughs> but alhamdulillah for Islam, it keeps us on the, the straight path. Um... Next question, in what ways has your background in um, in finance influenced your approach to entrepreneurship and vice versa? Yeah, that's a really important question, actually, because I do think that I see business in a different way because I learned how to invest first. And when you learn finance and you learn sort of investing and you're, you're used to looking at financial statements, you know what to look like. Do you know what to look for? And so, you know, the first place you look at is how much money is coming in, uh, what are the expenses look like, what are the future projections. And so when you start a business, um, I know that a lot of people, uh, you know, it's sort of the trend almost on Instagram to sort of brag about, you know, how much you're paying for coaching and how much you're investing and all of your expenses and that you have a team um, when as an investor, you really want to see, you know, strong cash flow before you're increasing your expenses. And so the way that I look at business is I'm in business to make money. And so all of sort of my expenses and the way that I structure my business is designed in a way that the business is as profitable as possible with the least amount of expenses possible. And so, yes, there are investments into advertising and marketing and so on over time. But ultimately, I want to be as efficient as possible with my expenses in terms of the profit that it's bringing back. Okay, next question. There are people who have who work nine to five, like me, and um, by time I'm exhausted. I'm getting exhausted because I don't have time for other things. And um, is it actually smart to invest the money you have from your, from your nine to five into your online business and coaching, for example? I'm saying this as somebody who sells business coaching. I'm just being honest with you. I think that you should really start first. You know, you should, I think that right now, business, starting a business is free. Getting your first sale is free. Instagram is free. And so I think that for most people, the most important thing is finding your, finding your niche, finding your purpose, finding the thing that's going to be fun for you and that, you know, it's going to resonate with you as much as it is a need for other people. Um, and so I would actually start by creating an Instagram page, starting to post about your business idea and, and really creating your community before you start investing into your business, I would actually already have an Instagram page. I would already start building a community and I would already put up a link to create a wait list for the product that you're thinking of creating or the service that you're thinking of offering. And so, you know, for example, if you are selling, I don't know, one-on-one -on -one nutrition sessions, um, I would start by posting about 
diet. I would post about being busy and meal planning and grocery lists and stuff like that and create a community and then mention, you know, I'm thinking of offering these one-on-one -on -one services. What do you guys think? Um, if you're interested in being one of the first ones, sign up to my wait list. And once you see that there is significant interest in your product and people are actually saying, wow, I would totally sign up for that. And they're on the wait list. Then I would invest in your business because then you know that you have a business. You have something that you're interested in. You have a community of people who are also interested and they've expressed interest by joining your wait list. Okay. Smart answer. Um, if money is guaranteed for life for you and your family and your generation after you, but the condition is you have to choose a job, what would it be? That's really interesting because I wouldn't, <laughs> I would rather not have money guaranteed and not have a job. Um, my job, if I'm being honest, would be exactly what I'm doing today. I would not, I would not change anything. And I would not want money to be guaranteed for me and my family without it being guaranteed for everybody and their families. And um, that's very much what I, I do today is just make sure like, I know that at my age, inshallah, like my family is going to be good financially. And now I just want to make sure that everybody else is as many people as I can reach are as well. Um, actually, you're the first one who answers um, the, uh, the question in that way. Um, so you're actually the first one. Um, interesting. Um, I, by the way, I, I, I interviewed like 24, 25 guests and you're the first one. Um, so yeah, <laughs> next question. Miss Yasmin in one word. Wow, that's a really good question. Hmm. You know, it's funny because I have the word in French. I'm trying to think of what it is in English. Um, let's say focused. If you have your own heart in your hands, what would you advise it? My own heart? Yes. To stay soft. What's the best moment in your life? The best moment in my life is the day that my daughter was born. Any regrets? Any regrets? No. I am, I can honestly say that I am so happy to be where I am today. Um, I have no regrets. Just really, really grateful. I'm doing it now. What makes you you? What makes me me? <clears throat> I think that what makes me me is my ability to turn, you know, very, um, to turn my own very painful experiences um, into this incredible power that I can transfer to other women so they never have to experience the same ones that I did. And I think that um, a lot of people um, get stuck in the things that happen to them. And alhamdulillah, for, for whatever reason, Allah has given me this ability to not get stuck and to keep moving and to be able to bring other people with me. I wish I had continued with the interview. There, there was, uh, there were some um, unstable connections. I hope I can edit it. So grateful to have met you. You're an absolutely beautiful person, Thank you. and I'm so excited to see everything that is going to come from your work, from your business, from your Instagram page. Um, Allah put so much barakah in everything that you do, and allow every single one of your du'as to be answered. Inshallah. I mean, yeah, we're done. Salaam alaikum.